few announcements, some pretty exciting stuff. This coming Wednesday is our first uh, Winter Wednesday. Meal for everyone in the community. Pass the word. Tell your friends. Uh, anyone's welcome. We're going to be having turkey for sure. We got a lot of food. Mashed potatoes and gravy are at every northern Minnesota meal, right? So... 5.30, right? 5.30 this coming Wednesday. Um, there is a sign-up sheet in the fellowship hall if you want to bring um, treats and make coffee uh, one Sunday during the winter. Next Sunday, we've got a guest speaker. And again, spread the word. I'd, I'd love to have a bunch of people here. Julie Boone, a missionary to Chile, is going to be here with us. And she's going to be sharing her story and how God's working in the country of Chile um, she's home on what they call furlough for right now, just going around speaking at different churches. And, and you're not going to want to miss her. She's, uh, she's going to be wonderful. So come on out next Sunday for that. Um, I think that's it. Any other announcements? Gretchen, Jody, anything you can think of? All right. Um, <clears throat> we are going to sing a hymn that's not in our hymnal. So we're going to put it on the screen. And the name of the hymn is Joy Unspeakable. And um, I don't know, anyone here know this, this hymn? Okay, you'll catch on. Don knows it. You can actually clap to this song if you want. You can be joyful. Um, it's a little faster song. But let's, uh, let's just sing this one together. Go ahead and stand. And uh, I'd like, like to have songs like this where, you know, um, it's not a funeral song. You'll see what I mean in a second here. Mm -hmm.
Mirchi. That just snaps right along with us. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Not much room for breath. <laughs> Not much room for breathing. You know, we get our cardiac workout and everything here. Did did you know? And this is this is interesting. Mixing the pastor with the refrigeration. Uh, back in the day before computers, we had these tables, uh, charts. And and if uh, a customer would call and they wanted a new furnace or air conditioner, especially air conditioning, we'd go ahead and look in the charts, and it would tell us how many BTUs to put into the building based on its occupancy of people and um, and and I. I was doing a church one time, and I looked up churches in the table, and they had different BTU uh, tables for mainline denominations than they did for evangelical denominations. We needed bigger air conditioners for the evangelicals than we did for the mainlines. And I thought, that's strange, but it's they got excited in church, and they put off more BTUs, and we needed to have bigger air conditioners rather than just sitting there somber and solar. But so we might have to get a bigger air conditioner if we get excited and sing songs like that. Uh, Anyway, joy unspeakable, full of glory. Um, Thank you so much for last week giving me the the day off, and uh, I was able to get out on on the deer stand with my nephew, Dustin. Uh, my nephew Dustin is around 35 years old. His dad took his own life, my brother, about 20 years ago. And uh, so Dustin really doesn't have a dad. And we become pretty close. I was best man at this wedding here a year or so ago. And, and just, uh, it was a great time. I got nothing. He got a deer. So I was happy about that. He has all the work. I don't have to do any work um, butchering that deer. So um, it was a great time. And I heard Gretchen, you did an awesome job. Thanks for stepping up and filling in and, and helping out with that. Um, so that's one of my testimonies. God just gave us a great time together last week. And um, just to be able to unwind, relax, listen to the wolf packs howling at night had nothing to do with me not seeing a deer, but they were out there all the nights we were there. And um, a couple of prayer needs I want to think about here is... Um, a family in Hibbing just lost their livelihood two days ago, uh, the Yoder family. They own uh, Yoder Building Supply, and uh, their lumber yard went up in smoke. It took seven or eight fire departments to get it out, and it took all night. And And they, they just bought it, I want to say, five or six years ago, and they've done such a great job. So keep that, the family in mind. Um, any, any other joys or, or prayer requests that you want to just bring to the Lord this morning? I believe he answers prayer. Yeah, we'll lift him up in prayer. What else? Needs? Joys? I'm just so happy to be here. This is a great place. Well, silence. We'll, we'll just uh, we'll just pray in general. We'll lift up these couple of needs to the Lord right now. Father, we do thank you that every good and perfect gift comes from you that uh, you care for us and, and you're with us every step of every day. And we lift up the Yoder family today as they're walking through a, a loss. And we thank you that there was no loss of life and that you would just bring peace and comfort to the family as they look at whether or not they're going to rebuild. And so I ask that you just give them that kind of direction. We lift up Stephanie's dad to you who's in the hospital and Pray that you would be with him, that you would reach down from heaven, touch him with the healing hand, that you'd be with the nurses and doctors who are treating him. Give them total recall of everything they've ever learned about medicine. Father, we lift up uh, Rick and Phoebe Johnson as Phoebe is uh, end of days with her cancer. and Just ask that you'd bring peace into that house and minister to them in a real and perfect way. Lord, for any unmentioned needs that are here today, we just lift those up to you and and we say thank you in advance for giving us the answers we need. For those who are out deer hunting today, we just ask that you would keep them safe and that you would meet them where they are in your great wilderness. Father, we just uh, thank you again for this day. We surrender the service into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> well, we're
we're going to um, receive this morning's offering. And I want to read a verse of scripture. It says in Matthew 6, 21, For where your treasure is, there your heart is also. And Jesus is not after our treasure. He wants our hearts. And that's the greatest thing we could possibly give him is, I mean, what, what do you, I, I think I preached this on Father's Day. What do, you, what do you get the God of the universe for a present? You know, pretty much it, he, he's got everything. The only thing we can give him is our lives. Lord, I love you. I surrender to you. Um, This this morning uh, where we're not singing for each other, we're not singing uh, for the pastor just because it's tradition, but but I, I hope these choruses that I picked out, uh, we can just sing them straight to Jesus and just like our prayer to him, uh, trust me, you'll be able to catch a breath in this one, a little more worshipful song. Uh, let's stand together in this first one. You are my strength when I am weak. You're the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. And we're singing this just right to the Lord today. You are the strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my Seeking you as a precious tool, Lord, to give up by be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name.
This is holy ground We're standing on holy ground For the Lord is present And there he is It's holy This is holy ground We're standing sit down at the piano and uh, I'll just play some of those worship songs and just get my mind off of, you know, what's going on in real life. Well, I'm going to really bless you today. I'm going to I'm gonna um, just make you feel maybe like dirt. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, the title of my message today. <laughs> <clears throat> title of today's message is Your Days Are Short. How's that for uplifting? You're going to die. Yeah. Um, when I was teaching, it was great. You know, the kids, they would always whine and complain and, oh, do we have to do this work? No. Nope. Do we have to take this test? No. Nope. You don't have to do that. Well, but, well, if I don't do it, um, you're going to get an F. I said, yeah. The only thing you have to do is die. Everything else is a choice. Oh, no, you got to pay taxes. No, you can cheat on those. Oh, boy, I forget we're filming this. Um <laughs> <clears throat> But the only thing that we really don't have a choice in is someday we're going to die or Jesus is going to return and take us with him. You know, growing up in the church as a kid, I never knew that Jesus was coming back. I thought he came, he went, that was the end of that. And, and all throughout scripture, I mean, it's, it's very clear. Jesus said, I'm going to return. I'm going to come back. I'm going to come and get you. Um, and you will spend eternity in paradise with me. Um, but that's one thing we all have to look forward to is death. Boy, this is going to be a great service, huh? <laughs> so it says, I'm going to start in Luke chapter 12 here. Uh, Luke chapter 12 in verse 15. He said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. 
A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. You know, greed for money, greed for possessions, greed for time, power, status in the community. You know, I, I think it's okay to work and, and, you know, improve our lives and that kind of thing. But Jesus said to them, uh, be on your guard against greed. You know, uh, your life is not consist of the abundance of your possessions. Anyone know what a cylinder count is? We're, one girl knows. Guys, guys are outnumbered here. It's like four to one women to men in church this morning. It's crazy. Well, cylinder count is what, what a guy uses when he's out with his buddies to boast about who's got the most cylinders. So you, you count, so you got a car with a V8, there's eight cylinders, and you got six more in your, your smaller vehicles, so now you know eight, nine cylinders. So you got 14, you got a lawnmower, there's 15, you got a weed whacker, there's 16, you got a, you know, and, and you add up all the cylinders you have, and, and whoever's got the most cylinders, <clears throat> they're the man. They're the ones who win, right? And Jesus says, you know, your life does not consist of your cylinder count. And then he told him a parable. And he told him this parable. The ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop. He thought to himself, what should I do? I've got nowhere to store all these crops. And now we're, we're talking about farmer, but you can think about a business owner or someone who's been an investor and, you know, got a lot of yield from, from the work that they did. What am I going to do? I don't have a place to store my crops. And then he said, this is what I'll do. I'm going to tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I'm going to store all my grain and my goods. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty, plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. How about that lottery this last week, huh? One point, what, billion dollars? And someone in California won it? Hmm. Sounds like a good life. Sounds like something that maybe some of us have dreamed about, you know, never having to work again, having a big garage to play in like this guy's doing. He's building a bigger garage. Um, but Jesus said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. And then who's going to get what you've prepared for yourself? So this guy is saying, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat, drink, be merry. I'm going to store up all my wealth. You know, life is good. And God's saying, you're an idiot. You spent your whole life collecting things, and tonight you're going to die. Did the man really make a difference in the world? Um, just a few nights ago, and Randy, you might know this, a few nights ago there was a 911 call and a hunter who didn't return from the stand and uh, ended up that hunter passed away. And not sure how it didn't look suspicious or anything. Day or so later, Don comes home from school, 38 years old. Don comes home from school, says, do you remember so-and-so? I said, yeah, she was a teacher at the school. Yeah, her son, he was only 38. He died out in the hunting stand. And I said, that's the guy who was at Little Johnson Ray. We never know. We don't know when our time on this earth is done. And, and Jesus is telling this parable, and he's saying to people, hey, yeah, it's all right. Work hard, do well, but don't let your whole life consist of stuff and things that you surround yourself with and wealth and, and, uh, and uh, power and status and possessions. And Jesus goes on to say, he says, don't worry about your life. God will provide all of our needs. And if he takes such good care of lilies and birds and even deer, uh, won't he take better care of you? And here's what goes on. And this is how it'll be in verse 21. This is how it'll be with anyone who stores up things for himself but is not rich toward God. Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. How much more valuable you are than the birds. And Jesus is really trying to get across to these people. He's, you know, God takes care of the ravens. They don't plant, they don't reap, but God feeds them every day. And you, know, you go back even to the children of Israel when they were traveling through the wilderness with no resources whatsoever, dry desert, and every morning except for one, the Sabbath, but every morning 
people would leave their tents, they'd go out, and God provided manna. It was laying all over the ground. And they would pick up, and they would eat until they're full, and then it would go away, and the next morning there would be manna on the ground. And then water. He got water out of rocks. He told Moses, go speak to that rock, and water's going to pour out of it. He told Moses, another, go strike that rock, and water will come out. And the whole tribe of Israel, thousands of people, they'll be, their thirst will be quenched. So it's the God who can bring water from a rock, manna on the ground. I mean, there's a, there's a song out there right now. It's a great song called Honey in the Rock. And I always thought, where do they get that from? Well, there's a verse of scripture that says, if God needed to bring honey out of a rock, he would do that for you. He'll provide all of our needs. And so it keeps going here, verse 25. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And you know what? It's just the opposite. When you worry, medical science has shown that you take hours off of your life by worrying. And so um, one of the things I like to think of is, you know, he is the Lord of my life. And when I get this urge to start worrying about something, I can just hand it off to him and say, hey, God, um, remember when I gave you everything that I have? And I can imagine I'm going, uh, yeah, well, some of your stuff is screwed up and you need to fix it. So that happened one time. I, I might have shared this story. I apologize if I did. But we woke up one morning to go to church and, um, and look out in the street. And, and it snowed that night. And I look and my refrigeration van's gone. My trailer's gone. And two snowmobiles are gone. Someone stole them. And we were running late. We had to teach Sunday school. And, and I told uh, Don, I said, let's pray. And that's, that was my prayer. I said, God, yeah. Remember when I gave you everything I have? Yeah. Well, someone stole your stuff. If you want it back, <laughs> you want it back, you're going to have to deal with it. We got to get to church. And so we took off. We left for church. And I'd forgotten something. And so we turned around through town and went back home on a road that we never traveled. And there parked on the side of the road was my van with a trailer, no snowmobiles. And so I got home. This is before cell phones. Picked up the phone. I called the police. And I said, hey, van got stolen. And I saw it. I don't have time to deal with it. I got to go to church. And so they recovered my van and the trailer. And they got it back to our house. And and uh, uh, later they uh, found another snowmobile. And so now, you know, God got three of the four things back. And a day or two goes by, and the phone rings, and I said, hello. And they said, is this Bergie? And I said, yeah, that, that was my nickname, is my nickname. And, uh, well, we've got a snowmobile behind our business, and it's got the name Bergie written on the side of it. Are you missing the snowmobile? I said, yeah, I am. I'll, I'll swing down later on and pick it up. I didn't worry, folks. I didn't worry one bit. He took care of his stuff. And that's what Jesus is saying here. Since you cannot do this very little thing, add an hour to your life by worrying, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the lilies grow. They don't labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. And if that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you O oh, you of little faith. Boy, this is just building us up, right? O oh, you of little faith. Don't set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Don't worry about it, Jesus said. Don't worry about anything because he's our father. He's not going to let harm come to us. Jesus said the pagan world runs after all these things, and your father knows that you need them. Seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Does that sound familiar? I snuck that out of the message this morning for the offering verse. So our lives are short. Psalm 39.5 says, Indeed, you have made my days hand breaths, and my age is nothing before you. Certainly every man at his best state is like a vapor. Man is a mere phantom as he goes to and fro. He bustles about, but only in vain. He heaps up wealth, not knowing who's going to get it. And so the psalmist says that we're just like a vapor. Go outside and breathe out a breath, and you watch it in the air, and then it just disappears. And the older I think I get, the more that seems real. Like, I still think, in, in my mind, I still think I'm 20. But my body is telling me, you are not 20 anymore. And it tells me that every morning when I roll out of bed, it's 
cracking and, and achy and, you know, um, the days just fly by like crazy. Psalm 144 says, man is like a breath. His days are like a fleeting shadow. Ecclesiastes six twelve says, for who knows what is good for a man in life during the few meaningless days he passes through like a shadow. Um, over and over, it just says life is short. Life is short. We can't even plan for tomorrow. The book of James says, now listen, you who say today or tomorrow we're going to go to this city or that city, spend a year there, carry on business, make money. Well, you don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You're but a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it's the Lord's will, as we live, we'll do this and that. So what do we have to do with our lives? What, what's, what, how should we be living our lives as short as they are? And um, I'm going to give you like three or four things here. Number one, make your relationship with God right. Be ready for his return. That is absolute number one, what we need to do with our lives. And in, in Luke chapter 12, 35, it says, Be dressed and ready for service. Keep your lamps burning. Like men waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It'll be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. I tell you the truth, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, he'll come and wait on them. It'll be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes the second or third watch of the night. Scripture says that we need to have our relationship right with God, that when, when God returns, when Jesus returns, when, when our life on this earth is done, that he'll find us ready. He'll find us doing his work. He'll find us doing his will. Boy, one of the things I didn't want to ever do when I was a kid is get found by my dad doing something I shouldn't be doing. I was scared of my dad. I remember we were water skiing. It was the beginning part of the year. There's still ice on the edges of the lake. and But we loved water skiing, so we'd be out there skiing, and uh, we had an old crappy floating dock, and one end was sagging down toward the water. Well, it made a perfect ramp. And so we take off off the dock, ski around the lake, and then we come back to the dock and jump up on it and never get wet, you know, except for our legs. My dad saw us do it. He said, you do that ever again, you're done skiing. No more. It's dangerous. Of course, nothing's dangerous when you're 15. And so uh, it was my turn to go skiing. My brother was pulling me in the boat and take off off the dock and go around. And I told my brother, make a pass by the cabin. And, and we, we made a reconnaissance pass and, and looking for dad. Dad's not down there. Okay. Go back again, hopped up on the dock, and out behind the bushes, he jumped. He said, that's it, you're done. No more, put the boat away, put the skis away. Father caught me misbehaving. Scripture says, let's let our Father catch us doing something good. Second thing, make our relationship right with God, be ready for his return. We need to make things right in our earthly relationships. Um, you guys know about my dad. You know that he is not... Marshall Bergerson that he used to be, his dementia is really taking over, and and um, you know, we're taking care of him the best we can. But I tell people, I said, I have no regrets. There is not a thing in that relationship that I would ever change. We've traveled tens of thousands of miles from Canada to the Gulf of Mexico, from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean on our Harleys, We've hunted together. We've fished together. We've canoed together. We've poached deer together. Oh, boy, I'm being recorded. Um, <laughs> you know, we've blown up beaver dams together. He was best man at my wedding. Um, there isn't a thing when he dies that I, I can say, I wish I would have. I wish I would have done this. There's no regrets. And, and that's how God wants us to be with our earthly relationships. He wants us to make those right as well. Matthew 5.23. Therefore, if you're offering your gift at the altar and remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First, go and be reconciled to your brother. Then, come after your gift. Settle matters quickly with your adversary who's taking you to court. Do it while you're still with him on the way. Or he may hand you over to the judge, the judge may hand you over to the officer, and you might be thrown in prison. Scripture says, let's try to live peaceably 
with each other. And then finally, so make your relationship with God right. Make your relationship with your fellow man right. And then thirdly, what should we be doing in the short little life that we have? Because remember, it's short. Be found doing the will of God for your life. <clears throat> the will of God for your life is different than the will of God for mine. And every one of us, and that's why we call it a personal relationship. John 4.31 says, Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. His disciples were so dense sometimes. Jesus said, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. And his disciples said to each other, Did someone have brought him food? Does he have a snicker bar in his robe? What do you mean? Did he sneak some food in here? I mean, we set the table and he's, he's, he brought his own food? Anyway, <laughs> Jesus, he's, he's shaking his head going, oh boy, these are the 12 I picked. Uh, my food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say four months more and then the harvest? Well, I tell you, open your eyes. Look at the fields. They're ripe for harvest right now. And that brings us to John 3.16. For God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him would uh, not perish, but have everlasting life. And Jesus is saying, look at all these people. Look at the fields. Look at everyone who needs to hear the good news of the gospel. So whether it's, uh, and you know, I'm living every day as if it's my last. I don't know if I'll be here next Sunday. I plan to, but it's up to God. Um, don't know when my ticket's going to get punched. I don't know when the Lord is going to return. But until that time, I'm going to make sure my relationship with him is right, my relationship with other people is right, and I want to get caught by him doing something good. I want to get caught by him doing his will whenever it is that he calls me home. So, um, folks, you're all going to die. In fact, it was it was hilarious. One day I missed part of the day of school. He says, Mr. Bergerson, where are you going? I said, I have a doctor's appointment. I'll be back tomorrow. What's wrong? They're just, I'll be back tomorrow. And so I come to class the next morning. Mr. Bergerson, Mr. Bergerson, are you all right? I said, well, I'm dying. And these 11 and 12 year olds looked at me and they didn't know what to say. I said, well, so are you. I've got one less day to live today than I did yesterday. So we're all actually dying. And that became, you know, those kids, they use that through the school year. Yeah, well, how are you doing? I'm dying. You know? <laughs> um, our days are short, but he wants to use them. He wants to use those short days that we have on this earth to bring glory and honor to his name, to win people to him, to spread the good news about his love to everyone that we possibly can. Let's do that right now. Let's just commit to him. Father, <clears throat> thank you so much for putting breath in our lungs today because if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't even be alive. We ask that you would help us to walk in your path, that we would have a right relationship with you, that we surrender all that we have into your hands. We we pray that you would help us mend any relationships that need mending here on this earth with our fellow man. And Lord, show us your will for, you, for our lives that we can do what it is that you want us to do. So on that day when you call us home, we'll be found doing your will. And you can say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the rest of the Lord. Father, we surrender ourselves to you again this morning. In Jesus' precious name, God's people said, amen. Well, folks, don't forget Winter Wednesday this week, 5.30. Don't forget that uh, Julie Boone will be here next Sunday. I want to just fill this place. As, well, what do we have? 40 people that live in the area. So, I mean, we can <laughs> get as many out to uh, support her as possible. Let's go ahead and stand. We're going to sing our closing hymn. And God will raise you up on eagles' wings. Bear you on the breath of God. Make you to shine like the sun.
Have a blessed week. God bless everyone here. Thank you.